I've had my hands on the new Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra for a few weeks now and its battery life has been insane. So now it's time for it to go head to head against its predecessor, the S23 Ultra, as well as the new OnePlus 12, Oppo Find X7 Ultra, Vivo X100 Pro, Pixel 8 Pro and iPhone 15 Pro Max in this extremely detailed 100 to 0% battery life drain test. But before we get into it, it's worth mentioning that Versus.com and myself are currently running a giveaway until the end of March. So be sure to subscribe to our channels and click the link down below to stand a chance of winning a free Samsung Galaxy S24, S24 Plus or S24 Ultra. Now let's get back to the test. All phones have been set to the exact same brightness levels using a Lux meter. They are all sitting on 100% battery health. They have all been updated to their latest available software updates. They are all SIM free and connected only via Wi-Fi. They are all running at 1 to 120 hertz screen refresh rates since they all have ultra TPO displays and they have all been set to their native screen resolutions. Does the latest Samsung flagship have what it takes to come out on top? Will the iPhone reclaim its throne or will they both be left in the dust? This is Technic and without further ado, let's find out. Before we get things going, it's worth making sure that all phones are sitting at 100%, which they indeed all are. I've been using the AC for hours before the test and throughout the entire test at 16 degrees Celsius. So the room temperature is sitting at around 22.2 degrees in Celsius. And though they have all been sitting on charge for about an hour or two before the test, you can't really compare temperatures over here. But if you are interested in charging temperatures, we have the highest being on the Vivo and the lowest temperature in terms of degrees Celsius seen on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, no surprise there. Now hitting start on the start timer interval on the phone on the right hand side. Just to let you guys know a couple things around the screen, I'm sure it can be a little bit overwhelming. At the top right hand corner, we do have the time interval, which is in relation to the percentages below the branding of each device above each device itself. And below that is the temperatures in degrees Celsius, which will change to intervals. As you can see now, after the 30 minute mark interval, we will now get to those temperatures and those are locked into this specific interval at 30 minutes. And the percentages above that is locked into that time interval as well. So the percentages don't adjust in real time per se, but more so based on those intervals. So keep an eye on that interval time at the right hand side, which is in relation to those percentages and those degrees Celsius above each device. Now, if you are a little bit rusty on specs at the bottom, I have popped a couple specs over there so that you can compare throughout the test. And at the bottom right hand corner, we do have the current app. Of course, we are now running through Shazam. It is currently set to auto and we are screen recording as well. And after the one hour mark interval, we have the S24 Ultra on 95% as opposed to the iPhone 15 Pro Max on 94%. And this is pretty much the only time you'll see the Samsung ahead of the iPhone, at least at the start, because the next set of intervals actually have them matched for quite a while. But stick around till the end of the video because it gets really interesting towards the end. Now we're testing our temperatures after the one hour 30 minute mark interval. The Pixel is the hottest and has been for a little bit now which is a bit strange and the iPhone is the coolest. The S24 Ultra is actually a bit cooler than that of the S23 Ultra thanks to better thermal management, which is great to see. And of course the new chipset from Qualcomm, that being the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, but inside the S24 Ultra, it is for Galaxy. So it is slightly boosted over the regular Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 we see inside of the OnePlus 12 and Oppo Find X7 Ultra. It's not as much of a difference as we saw last year with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy found inside the S23 Ultra when compared to the regular Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. So it's not as much of a difference in terms of clock speeds, but it has been a lot more optimized for the S24 Ultra this time around. And I must say it's a lot more efficient as you'll see a little bit later on. After two hours and 30 minutes, we have 83% on the S24 Ultra, which is beating its predecessor, which is sitting on 80%. 88% on the OnePlus 12, which is 5% ahead of the Samsung, 87% on the Oppo, 1% below the OnePlus, 89% on the Vivo, above all of those, which is actually in first place here, very surprising to see that. 77% on the Pixel 8 Pro and 83% on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, matching that of the S24 Ultra. Now reaching the three hour mark interval, you'll notice that the iPhone and the Samsung, the latest Samsung, that being the S24 Ultra, are sitting at the exact same 80%. And as I mentioned earlier, you will see they have the same percentages in the next few intervals. And I have to say, 
Oh, Samsung indeed copying Apple again, this time in terms of battery percentages. Well, it's a bit of a giggle, but you can't really copy that. I'm just saying that Samsung have really come a long way since iPhones, well, the Pro Max iPhones for the past few years have been beating every single one of Samsung's flagship Ultra devices. But this time they're literally sitting neck and neck within every interval. Now, after the three hour, 30 minute mark interval, the Pixel is still the hottest with the highest peak and the iPhone is still the coolest with the lowest peak. The S24 Ultra is sitting at 77%. The iPhone 15 Pro Max is sitting at 77%, but they are both being beat by the Vivo, the OnePlus, which are both matched and the Oppo. The S23 Ultra is 5% below the S24 Ultra and it is still 5% behind its successor after the four hour mark interval. Now, getting to the actual chipsets, they're all manufactured by TSMC, but the Pixel's Tensor G3 chip is actually made by Samsung. Very strange, but it tends to not be as efficient as the ones made by Qualcomm that are manufactured by TSMC. The S24 Ultra and S23 Ultra actually have the exact same battery size, but the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 found inside the S24 Ultra is actually a lot more efficient. As I mentioned earlier, it's a lot more optimized. Now, after reaching the four hour, 30 minute mark interval, we just ran through selfie video recording. Next up, we have main video recording, as you'll see at the bottom right corner in terms of the current app running. Now in selfie video recording, we set all of them to 1080p 30fps since I like to keep my tests exactly the same as the past 30 odd tests I've done in the past so that you can compare all of these results to all of my previous battery drain test results and all the phones that I have put in these tests for the past three or four years. Now you cannot compare these results to any other channels results because we use different apps and different brightnesses, so on and so forth. So just stick within my channel. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. It would be much appreciated because a ton of effort and time goes into these tests. Now I am currently running through some benchmarks. I run through an hour of benchmarks in my battery drain test, which consists of Antutu, 3 Mark, and GFX bench for one hour and one hour only. Now this is not because I'm trying to drain the phones faster to save myself some time. Trust me, these tests usually go on for more than eight, nine hours. So it's like watching paint dry, but it's because I can't exactly play games on seven different phones at one time. I don't really have that amount of hands and I don't have any employees to help me with that either. It would also be an absolute mission to record that. So these benchmarks, all of the ones that I've chosen actually simulate high performance gaming. So if you play something such as PUBG Mobile or Call of Duty Mobile Genshin Impact, these are gonna simulate that battery performance. So after those benchmarks, we now have a peak temperature on the Oppo Find X7 Ultra being the hottest at 66 degrees Celsius with the iPhone being the lowest at 49.3 degrees Celsius. And not that far off, I must say, is the S24 Ultra, which is a little bit cooler than the S23 Ultra. Once again, thermals are getting a lot better. Other Android devices here still tend to get quite hot even with the new chipset. Now it is interesting to see that the Vivo X100 Pro with the Dimensity 9300 chip, that chipset actually has four performance cores, four main cores and absolutely no efficiency cores. So how is it so efficient right now? It is sitting on 36%, just 1% behind that of the S24 Ultra, almost matching that of the iPhone 15 Pro Max, which again is the same as the S24 Ultra. But now reaching that seven hour mark interval, we actually see the iPhone 15 Pro Max 1% ahead of the S24 Ultra for the first time since that hour 30 minute mark interval. And it might be like that throughout the test. I guess we'll have to wait and see. The Samsung was actually a bit better in terms of battery percentage in the first two intervals compared to the iPhone, the S24 Ultra that is, compared to the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And that's because it, it seems to hold its percentages a bit better at the start of the test, but it kind of drops off near the end of the test. iPhones are known to hold those last few percentages, like your life is depending on it. And I'm actually super surprised to see the OnePlus and Vivo do a similar thing over here. The Vivo is really surprising me, but you have to remember the OnePlus and the Vivo have the largest batteries here at 5,400 milliamp hours. So it's no surprise to see them perform well. Now, if the S24 Ultra or the iPhone 15 Pro Max had that same size cell, would they perform better than these devices? I mean, they already are, so how much longer would they last? Now we've hit that eight hour mark interval. We have 22% on the S24 Ultra, 24% on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, which is actually now finally leading the pack. 20% on the Vivo, 18% on the OnePlus, 3% left on the Pixel. And the Pixel is about to knock off now, eight hours and 10 minutes on the Google Pixel 8 Pro. It did a couple minutes more in my last battery drain test, the first time I tested it out. I'll compare that again at the end of the test. So make sure you stick around to the end because I compare the first time I tested these devices as well as their predecessors. So the Pixel 7, 
11 Pro, S22 Ultra, OnePlus 11, so on and so forth. The S23 Ultra knocked off eight hours and 21 minutes. Now I have had a couple of these phones for about a year now, but they all pretty much sit in my drawer and I just use them for YouTube. So they're all pretty much new, which is why all their battery health percentages are sitting at 100%. The Oppo actually lasted longer than the S23 Ultra, even though the last interval, it had a lower percentage and it made it to eight hours and 27 minutes and it also has the best milliamp hour per minute drain reading. Now after eight and a half hours, we have 16% on the S24 Ultra, 20% on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, and in between those, we have the OnePlus 12 at 11% and the Vivo X100 Pro at 15%. Now it is super interesting for what comes next because I'm so happy that all these phones have made it past the eight hour mark interval. I think this is the first battery drain test I've ever had where all seven devices have made it past eight hours. Now we're hitting nine hours and four phones are still going, that being the S24 Ultra, the OnePlus 12, the Vivo X100 Pro, once again, still surprising me here, and the iPhone 15 Pro Max. The Vivo actually has a the same size battery as the OnePlus, but it's doing 4% more over here. So that's really interesting to see. Now, can they all make it to at least the nine hour, 30 minute mark interval? I have a funny feeling that they will, and that's not just because I've seen this test before. And they all do. As you can see, 6% left on the S24 Ultra, 1% on the OnePlus 12, a button knock or 4% on the Vivo, slightly beating that of the OnePlus 12, and 9% on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, which is beating the S24 Ultra, but just by a little bit. Now we are reaching that 10 hour mark interval. Can they all reach 10 hours? No, they cannot since the S24 Ultra knocked off, landing in fourth place here with nine hours and 46 minutes, which is a hell of a lot better than the S23 Ultra now and when I tested it for the first time. And while I was testing out the temperature at the end of the S24 Ultra, the OnePlus 12 knocked off with just seconds after the S24 Ultra with the same time of nine hours and 46 minutes, but the Samsung actually had a better milliamp hour per minute reading. So if it had that larger 5,400 milliamp hour battery we see inside of the OnePlus, it would have placed ahead of it. Now the Vivo is sitting on 1% at the 10 hour mark interval. And I cannot believe I'm saying that a Vivo made it to 10 hours. The iPhone is sitting at 5%. And I have to say guys, I told you in my last battery drain test when the iPhone 15 Pro Max, the first time I tested it, didn't really perform that well in terms of screen on time. It performs exceptionally well now. And that is because Apple is like an, a good wine. It tends to age better than when you first get it and the iPhone 15 Pro Max is still going after 10 hours and 30 minutes. The Vivo, by the way, plays second there with 10 hours and 22 minutes. Seriously, seriously impressive. But the iPhone is almost two hours ahead of the first time I tested it because iOS updates make a huge difference to battery life. Not necessarily when a new iPhone releases, that is though. But while it is the best iPhone there is, they're gonna keep making battery life better. And it ended off 10 hours and 40 minutes reclaiming its throne in top spot. Seventh place, we have the Google Pixel 8 Pro with a very impressive eight hours and 10 minutes. This is still fantastic screen on time, 5,050 milliamp hour battery, so a bit bigger than sixth place, which is the Galaxy S23 Ultra, 5,000 milliamp hour battery, eight hours and 21 minutes, and it actually beat the latest from Google, impressive to say the least. What is even more impressive though, is that the Oppo Find X7 Ultra beat the S23 Ultra, though it does have the same size battery, and not by too much longer, eight hours and 27 minutes with a 5,000 milliamp hour cell. Fourth place, which is where things really start to get interesting. The S24 Ultra placed fourth, but got nine hours and 46 minutes, almost 10 hours and just 10 seconds later, the OnePlus 12 knocked off with nine hours and 46 minutes. Though the OnePlus has 400 more milliamp hours in terms of battery capacity when compared to the S24 Ultra. So this is kind of expected. The Vivo X100 Pro has the same size cell as the OnePlus 12, but it fared a lot better with the Dimensity chipset at 10 hours and 22 minutes. And the new king has finally reclaimed its top spot, the iPhone 15 Pro Max with a whopping 10 hours and 40 minutes. Software updates do indeed make a huge difference for iPhones. Now, when it comes to peak temperatures, the Oppo got the hottest at 66 degrees in Celsius, while the iPhone 15 Pro Max got the lowest at 49.3 degrees Celsius. Now, if you take a look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see the first time I tested these devices and I've only tested the S23 Ultra, Pixel 8 Pro and iPhone 15 Pro Max before. The S23 Ultra, the first time 
time I tested it 11 months ago, it got almost nine hours. So battery life has slightly decreased, even though I've never used this phone on the daily. The Pixel 8 Pro is in the same boat and it only went down by about four minutes. While the iPhone 15 Pro Max jumped up by an hour and a half because of iOS software updates. Now, if you take a look below that, you'll see the predecessor's best times. So the S24 Ultra's previous device is the S23 Ultra and it has done almost an hour better than its predecessor, the S23 Ultra, pretty much an hour and a half better than the S22 Ultra. The OnePlus 12 has improved by an insane amount as opposed to the OnePlus 11. The Oppo Find X7 Ultra has only improved slightly as opposed to the Find X6 Pro. I didn't test out the Vivo X90 Pro, but the X80 Pro was almost three hours behind Vivo's latest flagship this year. The Pixel 8 Pro is about 30 minutes better than the 7 Pro, and the iPhone 15 Pro Max is significantly better than the 14 Pro Max's best score I ever got. Now, if you take a look at the bottom of all the devices, you'll see 5,000 milliamp hours slapped at the bottom. Now, of course, the S24 Ultra, S23 Ultra, and Oppo Find X7 Ultra all have 5,000 milliamp hour cells, so their times will remain the same, but their placements may change. If the rest were to drop or increase to 5,000 milliamp hour cells, the iPhone would jump up insanely to 12 hours and one minute. But the interesting thing to note here is that the Samsung would now place second with the same time though, but it would be ahead of the OnePlus and Vivo because it has a smaller battery at 5,000 milliamp hours where the others have 5,400 milliamp hour batteries. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with all of these phones. As I mentioned, I have never had a drain test where all of the devices get more than eight hours of screen on time. I hope you guys all enjoyed watching this video as much as I did watching all of these phones drain from 100 to 0%. Make sure that you click that link down below so that you can participate in the giveaway. This is Tech Nick and I'll catch you in the next one.